Hi, this is Cece, and I have accepted a new challenge. This is the 100 Artworks Challenge put together by Kelly Conrad. And the challenge consists of creating small works of art at a pace that we feel comfortable and to share them with the world. It's as simple as that, so I couldn't pass that up. She suggested to work on a small scale, under 8 inches if possible, and the requirement is to repeat the same parameters throughout the project. So I'm going to do cityscapes with different backgrounds and mediums. And I'm not sure if I'm going to record the process of all of them, but I decided to film the first one. So let me show you what I'm going to be working on because obviously I did not want to buy 100 canvases, however small they are. So on the right, I have DVD inserts. These are thin cardboard and I was left with a whole bunch of them when um, a chain of uh, rental movie rentals closed in Canada. My daughter used to work for one. So I have about 75 of them and underneath I have cardstock. These are backings of Stampin' Up! pattern paper and these measure 12 by 12 so obviously I will have to cut them down the same size as the DVD inserts which are 5 by 8 so it's a fairly small format which is good because I've decided to work quickly this is an exercise for me it will hopefully be a daily exercise I want to make this a fun experience and this will definitely help me grow as an artist Another repeating element will be text paper, which I will grab from this old dictionary that I just purchased in a used bookstore. So another recycling for me. And I just love how these three columns are nice and structured, perfect for taking inspiration for buildings. And they are big enough, they are large enough to cover the five by eight surface. So now that I've explained the challenge, here's the first of 100 artworks. Alright, so step one is to add the text paper to the substrate. I'm using Collage Podge by Tracy Bautista for Aileen's. I'm using an old credit card to smooth out the paper and to make sure there are no air bubbles and then I'm going to cut the excess off with just a pair of scissors. To smooth out the edges, I'm going around with a sanding block by Tim Holtz. And I'm going to make sure that the top of my substrate is sealed with another coat of collage podge. And that way, whatever I'm adding on top will not seep into the paper. I just gave a coat of gesso diluted with water just to tone down the yellow tint of the paper. And now using a Marksol pencil by Stabilo. I'm just tracing the outline of the building just to give me an idea of where they should be. For the background, I mix quinacridone nickel hazel gold paint with glazing liquid in the satin finish. And I'm also adding touches of alizarin crimson hue. This is also a golden paint. And I let the glazing dry for a little bit and then I'm using a baby wipe to remove some of it. And lo and behold, the shape of a sun started taking form, so I decided to go with it. Now I'm going to add some shadows to the building, again with the Sabilo pencil. And you'll understand what I mean by growing as an artist. This is the perfect example. I'm adding shadows, but they are not in the correct place compared to the position of the sun. So right now I'm just having fun. I'll realize that later, but um, and I will correct that later. I'm adding my Kishis Iron Oxide, which is a fun paint to work with. It's got a little bit of a grain to it. And now I'm starting the process of correcting those shadows. I'm using a baby wipe to remove some of those shadows that I previously created with the paint.
to further the sun reflection on the buildings, I'm using iridescent gold deep. Uh, this is another golden paint. Before I started this project, I was cleaning in my studio and I had a craft sheet full of leftover paint from a previous project. These were metallic paints by PBO, or not metallic but iridescent. And as I was scraping, I realized that they formed cute little rolls of um, chipped paint, almost like gold leafing. So I decided to incorporate that into the water over the wet gold paint and I love the way it looked. And that pretty much concludes my project for today. This was meant to be a quick one and in fact it took me about 30 minutes to complete including drawing time with a heat tool. I will include a link to the challenge in the description box if you're watching directly on YouTube and it will also be in my blog post so you can go check that out if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps and please subscribe to the channel and I will see you later. Bye!